Hello there, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today I want to wrap up Kubernetes configuration with Kubernetes secrets. So let's dive right in. So if we go to the documentation here in Kubernetes on the concepts, and we scroll down to configuration, you'll see that there are essentially two parts to configuration that I'm talking about, config maps, which we covered in the last video, and then today is config secret. Now there are a whole lot of other things on the configuration like best practices. I encourage you to spend some time reading that. Um, and then the other ones talk about basically how you can do configuration in these different, uh, like in Windows and so on and how to think about configuration for resources like pods and containers. But really, we're just gonna focus on these two and the rest you can sort of read for yourself. And I'll try to make this as straightforward and as simple as possible. It's not gonna look very different from what we did with config maps. If you looked at that video and you tried it, you're gonna see that it's just like one or two more new concepts you really have to learn today. All right. So here I am at my terminal and I have a cluster up. And again, you have about four ways to run a Kubernetes cluster by now. You know, to use K3D, Kind, Minikube, or even the Kubernetes cluster that's built into Docker desktop. So I'm not going to worry about that. And what I'm doing is I'm just looking here at pods that are created, deployment services and ingress controller, just so we can get some feedback. Other than that, um, what I'm going to do um, is go here to my command line. I'm going to start with where we left off the last time in terms of copying recursively the last directory we had, which was 12.01, and that was our config map. And I will rename this 12.02 essentially, but of course I want to call this KTS secrets 12.02. All right, and then I'm going to go to that directory and start my VS code. All right, so far, nothing new really. Maybe we expand this just a little bit. Um, but we increase the font there just a little bit. And so let's look at what we have in our KTS directory. Oh, we have our configurations from last time. What I'll do is actually just go ahead, create a new file. I'm gonna call it my secrets, for example. And then I'm going to, let's just put configuration next to the side of it like this. So I have a split screen view and I'm gonna close the file explorer. And that's because I actually wanna show you just how similar they are. And over here in my secrets file, I'm going to do secrets. And you can see it's already given me some help here in my editor and I'm gonna select Kubernetes secret. And so API version, kind, you can see that's all the same. And here I'm gonna type my secret as the name. Actually, I should have left it, I think it was already my secret. This type opaque, um, don't worry about that, just leave it that way. And then data. And here we can see, again, it's very, very similar to this, except that there's this type field, which we don't have over here in um, config map. But then other than that is data, and then it's the key and the value. So let's go password, and because we want to make a super secret password, we we'll say password one, two, three, four. Now, so here's the thing. I did not spend any time reading the text for the Kubernetes documentation, but if you did, you will see, and you should, you'll see that our config maps are meant for values we want to pass to our containers and pods that are can be public. So it's things like the version number, maybe a profile, things like that. Secrets are meant for things like credentials. However, as you will see, not because something is in secret, in Kubernetes secret, it means that you cannot access it. And the documentation will tell you that also, that there are a number of ways where you can easily get access to the secrets that's in Kubernetes. And that is if someone has the correct permission or access to that Kubernetes cluster or that namespace in which a secret has been created, then they can certainly create a pod that references that secret and then, of course, the, it will be injected for them. So there's a couple of suggestions that they give you in the documentation, and I recommend that you read it. The most important thing, though, is if you are treating values as private keys or password and that sort of thing, create secrets for them, even though 
on the surface it looked very similar and just as easily accessible as config mac still getting the habit of doing it the right way okay so i'll do that then i'll create another secret here and let's call it um, bank pin because why not and of course i have a very secure bank pin and these are all string values so you can see if i do this it's going to complain as you can say oh this needs to be a string value so i can enclose it in double quotes like that now if you were to hover over um like you know secrets uh, let me see here like this and you scroll down and you read the help you'll see that data contains secret data each key must consist of alphanumeric characters yada 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 and it tells you how the data should be 64-bit encoded and then it tells you how you can also use um, string data as a convenient way of storing non-binary secrets so what does that mean well let me just do it and show you so remember there's this other one that you can call string data and then here I can put a let's call it um, other password and then I'll put password uh, let's just call it password one two three four password why not that's super secure for me all right so that's it that is our secret file and so you, you can see the comparison to the config map <laughs> very very similar except for this bit okay and then here the string data all right, so I'll close this for now so as not to confuse anyone. And so let's do that. And so I'll focus now on just use running kubectl apply minus f, and then I'll use it on my KDS directory. And if I run that, it'll go ahead and it'll create all those things, including my secrets. So they're all created. And hopefully we shouldn't see any issues right now. Okay, and I don't really care actually about those pods anyway, so um, that's fine. So what I want to see, and so maybe I'll just close this, Control D, we, everything was created successfully. Zoom in, make this a little bit bigger, clean up. What I can do is kubectl get, and there are a number of things you can get, of course, a whole lot of things, but you can actually get secrets. And so if I do that and I run it, you'll see that oh, there's my secrets there and the type is opaque. Now remember when we had config map, we could do the same thing too. We can do get config map. And so you can see those things that my app um, has this config map called my app. Okay. Now I can also do this and I should be able to do like this. And it spit back out essentially the YAML version of what I created. Okay. All right. So we can do the same thing with secrets, I can do SEC secrets, I get that, and I can see that there are two sets of um, secrets in there, these name secrets, my secret and the other one that was created by the cluster. And so I can certainly specify the name for mine. And if I do that, you'll see that, yes, it tells me at how I have um, my secrets, it's opaque, and it has three values, essentially. Now, one of the things that um, I can do is then ask it to spit out that that value now if you remember um one way in which i was able i can see the details of this is to say describe so remember if we say describe part or something it shows you some slightly different information so the CRIB describe secrets if i do this describe instead now i can see the actual keys okay and I could do the same thing with um, config map if I see config map describe and then my app I can see the same thing right it tells me the keys and then it actually shows the value whereas here notice oh secret it just shows me the key tell me the size of it in terms of how many byte values but it doesn't actually show me the value but remember what I said is if you read the documentation, you'll see that it doesn't mean that you cannot get those values. So if we were, for example, were to say get secret, get secret, CTL, get secret, and then my secret, and then I did minus O, Y, A, M, L, just as I did before, 
you can see a YAML version of those secrets. And there you go. So I'll explain why you're seeing a difference here. Remember, our password for other was actually 123 for password, whereas here you see something very different. But I'll get back to that in a minute. But then if you look here on the data, you can actually see the pin 123, password, password 123, and you know, kind of secrets and all this other stuff. And then you can see on the string data, the other password and its value right there. So again, this is what I was referring to, that when you put stuff in Kubernetes secret, it doesn't mean that you cannot get, get access to it. Um, and of course, we have to test that how we can get how to inject this in a minute. But let me explain what's going on here. Remember, in the um, help, it says that when you use secret data, expect the values to be 64-bit encoded. And string value, except expect just a string value that is not binary, for example. So in other words, when you use data, Kubernetes automatically, um, when you use string value, sorry, Kubernetes takes this and 64-bit encoded for you. This is why this value look this way. If you use data, Kubernetes expect you to provide a 64 bit encoded value. So the question is, how do you get a 64 bit encoded value? And why didn't Kubernetes complain? Well, yeah, it's not going to do all that for you. It's just telling you how to use things. So let's take a look. If I have a Unix system, I have the Chrome call base 64, most likely install. And if I do H for help, you can see that you can pipe values to it for it to encode or for it to decode. And so as an example, if I say echo Hello, and I type it to base64, I'll see this is what hello look like in base64. Now you might be wondering, why do you base64 encode things? Well, when something you want to send something in email or something like you're transferred over the network, send it as a string with spaces and other stuff could be a problem. So by base64 encoding it, you can get rid of some of the weird characters that would otherwise be a problem if you decide to send it as just straight string. And it's still um, text, you want to read it with text in terms of, it's just ASCII characters, but it's been encoded, right? And so for example, if I say, hello space world, and I send this, notice there's no space in what I'm, I've encoded. I could get it back too, by taking the output of that, and say base64 minus minus decode, and now I get back world, okay? So this tells us that oh, in order for us to get our value for pass word one, two, three, four, we type it to base 64. And so this is what we really need to be to store in our secrets here. Okay. If we're using data, if we use a string data, the string data, Kubernetes is going to automatically encode it for us. And same thing here, the bank pin, shouldn't be this, but rather base64 value of this, which is one, two, three, four, and then pipe it to base64. And then we should take that and put it in our config file. Okay. Now, again, none of this means that our, it's so secret that nobody else can access it. I just showed you that we can do, okay, let's apply again. So let me get back to it. kubectl, apply, and let me run this again. And our secrets have been updated. And so we can go kubectl, get secrets, my secrets. And so we can see, yep, there it is. Uh, but we want to describe it. Let's do that. And now you can see bank pin, blah, blah, blah. It's opaque, doesn't show anything. But if I go back to get, and I do minus O, YAML, notice all of these show that all their um, in the encoded form, base64 encoded form, the two that I manually encoded, and plus the string data one that Kubernetes encoded for me. But it doesn't matter. They're all encoded. But look at this. Here are the actual values. Okay. Now, when you look at this guy, you see that uh, it is also encoded because that's how it was specified. But 
you know that though you can just copy this and do echo this guy, type it to base64 minus DECODE, and you'll get the value, right? That's one way you can do it that way. But let's say you didn't have access to, you know, be able to do this to um, get access to Kubernetes. But how oh, then, let's say you did not have access, how oh, then would the container or pod you want to use have access to this? So let me show you something. If I try to run docker run minus minus rm just to clean up this part after I'm finished with it, but if I try to run postgres, I'll try to run a postgres container and I just do like this, you'll see that it's going to fail because it says that oh, I need a password value, environmental variable to be set. And so I can set an environmental variable you use in Docker, use it minus E, specifying that equal, and then say the password is Postgres, for example. doesn't matter. Or password123. And now when I do this, notice how it starts up and it runs and it's happy. And it's sitting there and it's listening. If I do control C, it's going to clean up that part. That's why I did the minus minus RM. So let me do the same thing here in Kubernetes, right, with a pod. So what I'll do is I'll right click here, create a new file, and I'll just say my database that deployment, for example, that YAML. I'm going to do a simple deployment instead of go messing with ours that's a little bit more complicated. I'll say deployment, and I'm going to use Kubernetes deployment, and I'll simply call this my database. Okay, we've done this many times, so I'm not going to spend time going over this. So we have an image, and we know it's going to be Postgres, and then resource and all that good stuff. Postgres, I believe, run on port 5432. So we can expose that port. Now, I just demonstrated that if I try to create a pod with this image, because it's looking for an environmental variable with Postgres password, it's going to fail. So let's just take a look. And if we say watch and apply that entire directory, what should happen is our database, my database um, pod is going to be in a crash loop. That's because it's looking for that password and it doesn't have it. We can verify this by doing kubectl logs minus f for follow minus f and then I do my and then you can see same thing needs the password so how do we specify it let me go back here and i'm going to go right here and say env and this is always specify an environmental variable here and the value i want to specify right the name of this variable is pos postgres password and the value we want a value from so remember we can say value from and then we can see where this value is going to come from is it going to come from a config map or somewhere else or field reference no we want it to come from secrets now sure we can say that we know the secret is going to be let's say password right we have a secret called password but the name which what is the name of that secret so we know that how we have to specify a name and for us it's my secret and with this, this should allow us now to go into Kubernetes and my secrets and pull out this specific value and insert it here. And so if I do this and I do kubectl apply, and now if I rerun this, now we should delete that pod and notice it's up and running. And I can check and say kubectl and then logs minus f. And then if I do my database and I do this, notice how it's up and running because it has the key that it's um, that environmental variable. And we can go into this and confirm. So I'm going to use a slightly different program. I'm going to use clear up my screen. I'm going to use K9S. And I'm going to go down to my database part here. Um, and then go into this container, the progress container. And here we go. And actually, I want to, that's the logs. I'm going to go back up and I want to go into the shell. So I'm going to type S. I notice I'm in the shell. If I type ENV, you'll see that we have 
class guest password and notice it's the base64 decoded password it's not the base64 encoded password so kubernetes when it goes to insert it actually did the right thing for us but this is an example of how easy it is if you know the name of the secret even if you don't have the value you can just create a container that references it and then you can see the value so the reason for using Kubernetes secrets and so on is so you don't have to have that information in your pod and you know description and template and deployment and other stuff. So you keep them separate. And then if you read the doc, you will see it out there, enterprise ways in which the secret can be pulled from service providers. So you don't actually have the secret within Kubernetes directly. Kubernetes could get it from somewhere and then insert it for you. Um, that's a little bit beyond the scope of what we're doing, but just know that oh, that is possible. So I think that is it because I, I just demonstrated how easy it is to create a secret file and then very, explain the difference between data and string data, show you how you can get your secret in Base64 format, how you can change it or decode it from Base64. And then I showed how to use it. And, or insert it in your container. So that's it. If you found this helpful, please like and thumbs up the video, comment, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. And for those who already subscribed, thank you for coming back. Very much appreciated. To all of you, take care, stay safe. Bye. See you in the next video soon.